The biotech firm Innovio is the second to test its COVID-19 vaccine candidate on humans. Trials started last week. We spoke to Dr. David Weiner about how the trial is going so far. There are no issues and the, the recruitment, there are two dose groups in this study, a one milligram and two milligram, and the one milligram is being recruited now, and then when that one's done, we'll go to the two milligram. So you, you're you known as the father of DNA vaccines. Why do you think the DNA uh, approach is the right approach? So I think the nucleic acid approaches, such as we're using and the uh, uh, other groups uh, and some other groups are using really has significant advantages. Uh, for example, it took us about 10 weeks to get into the clinic um, with this. Uh, we also did a lot of non, a, a lot of animal uh, work along the way. And so it has a very reproducible uh, manufacturing. It's, it's temperature stable. It's simple. It's non-live. It's non-replicating. It doesn't spread from one uh, individual to another. So it has an enormous amount of conceptual safety advantage. It also has manufacturing advantages and um, production advantages. Uh, Anovio already produced enough to support not just this trial, but the next set of trials, which will be expanded towards efficacy um, with their platform. And so uh, there are significant advantages over this kind of approach than the traditional approaches we've used before. Now, Johnson & Johnson just told us today they're on track for a vaccine in early 2020 without getting too scientific. Talk to us about how different vaccine and different vaccine approaches actually compare. How is yours different from them? How is theirs different from Moderna and the one that the National Institutes of Health are working on as well? So there's sort of a, um, traditional vaccines have been based on really two technologies, live and non-live approaches. And, and that's a broad category. And live vaccines are our measles, mumps, and rubella that we've taken. And those grow inside our bodies and produce immune responses from the growing and, and make immune responses. Uh, a recombinant vector is sort of a hybrid, which is more what you're talking about with Janssen's product, which is a uh, product that uses a um, genetically attenuated piece of virus to be delivered and that could produce the immune response because it encodes the spike protein. And then you have in a totally separate category, protein vaccines, uh, which are non-live, just pieces of non-live as well, which produce, tend to produce different immune response like antibodies and, uh, and not so much uh, CD8 T cells. And finally, you have the nucleic acid, and you mentioned Moderna and, and uh, the DNA, so RNA and DNA approaches. And, and those have uh, similarities and differences. They have um, uh, more consistent manufacturing. They have simpler processes. I mean, the RNA is newer um, formulations. They require a lipid nanoparticle for delivery, and the DNA requires um, a, um, a, a facilitated delivery into the skin. So, but the nucleic acids, are actually produced inside our bodies, more like the live, but they're produced the DNA only locally in the arm, in the actually skin, and then it produces a functional looking spike protein. And so it presents to the immune system a very um, appropriately folded and customized antigen as if you would see from infection. And so it teaches the immune system exactly what to look for. And it does that, so each person builds their own vaccine but it's not live, it's a trick. And so it has the conceptual safety of a non-live, but the immune advantages of a live in a platform that's very simple simple and cassette-like to deliver it over and over again. Interesting, so how far are we realistically from a vaccine? We're hearing early next year, is that the soonest? So I think uh, that question is when we'll get to a licensed uh, vaccine that will be delivered for everyone. I think that what you're going to see after the phase ones is groups move into the phase two part and move towards efficacy trials. And I believe you're going to see that data sooner, of course, than you'll get to a licensed vaccine. But if we use an advantage, uh, 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 if we use an example of another vaccine that was developed during an outbreak, the Ebola vaccine that was developed in West Africa, once that got through its small efficacy trial and showed it had some ability um, efficacy against infection. It was then deployed rapidly 
as part of its development towards licensure in important and at-risk populations. And, and we kind of had an idea then it was somewhat effective and we now were actually using it as a tool while it was moving towards that licensure. So I think that that's really the situation you're going to see here. I mean, there are other situations people are saying like emergency use. Well, those are important as well, but I think you will see at least the one I just said. So realistically, what's the soonest in the most optimistic scenario? Give me a time frame that we could see a, a licensed vaccine. So I think you're going to see a licensed vaccine still, like everyone says, in about a year or so. But I think you're going to see these products come along and start to give us um, indications of their efficacy um, significantly before that. And those will then be tools that we can use to start um, protecting our healthcare workers, frontline responders, um, people that work in uh, environments that make it them at higher risk as we develop them. So I think there's an important stage there of how we roll them out towards licensure. That how much great. sooner is that? Well, that could be um, towards the end of this year. Okay. Uh, what is the collaboration like with other scientists? I understand a lot of scientists are working together around the world very quickly and that is unusual and unprecedented. Well, I think um, collaboration is a very important part of science, and I think scientists have uh, really been very uh, jumping in to collaborate on this. I think no one has said anything different. I mean, now you're looking at me, my, I'm at the Worcester Institute. We're part of the Inovio-led team that's built uh, around CEPI funding, and Moderna has the NIH collaboration and one of the other CEPI programs is a GSK, University of Queensland collaboration. And then you have the outside groups that are all pitching in, like uh, University of Pennsylvania is part of this team now, and I, I mentioned Kansas City, and then you have public health agency, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Laval University in Canada. And so more and more groups are joining the team to provide different expertise, animal challenges, um, essay development. And so it's, it's really us, all of us in the vaccine field against the virus.